Right, today I'm going to make some recipes using the most hated vegetables. They are the most hated but probably the most nutritious vegetables and you'd be surprised what you can do with cabbage and spinach and butternut or pumpkin all in one dish. I'm going to be doing a lasagna and we'll do a layer of tomatoes, a layer of butternut, a layer of spinach and then instead of using lasagna sheets, you can use them, but this is a great dish to serve with a protein meal to have a properly combined lasagna to be able to eat that with a protein meal. And instead of using lasagna sheets, you're going to use cabbage leaves. These lovely cabbage leaves like this. You're going to just tear them so that they can go flat. And just one layer, you're going to have this wonderful lasagna. Then I'm going to make a salad using another much hated vegetable, and particularly by men, dogs and children. And that is a broccoli salad, and I'm going to combine this with avocado. Anybody will eat the salad, just because you're adding avocado. And red peppers, and some sliced mushrooms. Now, the recipe for the pumpkin spinach and cabbage lasagna is in recipe book 2, on page 79. What I'm doing today is another variation of this. It's just slight adjustments. I'm not going to add the cinnamon and the ginger. You can add that if you want to. Um, I'm going to do a couple and I'm going to leave the um, I'm going to leave the mushrooms out because I'm going to want mushrooms in the salad and in the main course. Now while the butternut is steaming along there, I'm actually going to, the squash is steaming along, I'm going to pop the broccoli on top of that to save energy, time and space. Just cut all of these stalks away. And steam that very gently until it's bright green, but not mushy. This is a bamboo steamer that you can get at almost any kitchen shop and it just put, fits on top of your pot like that. So we're killing two birds with one stone. And then what we're going to do is pop the spinach into this pot here. You can, you can pull the back stalk off if you want to. You don't have to, but it's particularly people don't particularly like spinach. They may not really like the crunchiness of the stalk. But it's also nice to just give a bit of body to the spinach. You can chop them in. And uh, you can see I'm not adding actually any water to the, to the pumpkin or to the butternut. I added um, some filtered water. And this I've just rinsed. And this we're going to just simmer very, very gently until um, it's cooked through. Thing about spinach is it always looks like you've got so much but in fact you've got very little because it boils down to almost nothing so I certainly hope we've got enough um, spinach here. But the third layer is a tomato and onion or tomato and leek, tomato shallots, spring onions. I'm using leeks in this instance. And I'm going to dry stir fry this. People are always asking me what does dry stir fry mean. It just means putting your veggies or your onions into a hot pot that's been heated up. And then just stirring it very vigorously. as hot as I've anticipated, but um, it's fine to keep it going like that. Now while that is simmering gently there, I'm going to chop up the tomatoes and teach you a lesson about tomatoes. I want you to have a look. These are beautiful ripe tomatoes, but look at the front of them. They've got all these marks on them. And this is typically what happens when you buy tomatoes that have been placed in a refrigerator while they were green at your greengrocer or your supermarket. Then when you take them home and try and ripen them, this is what happens to them. They get this horrible mold or they go rotten really quickly and they get funny soft spots on them. You can still use them, just cut the yucky bits off. Um, but it's one of the reasons why it's ideal to buy ripe fruit and vegetables. I needed tomatoes for this dish and this is all I could find at the time. But it's a great time to just learn why it's not, why it's better to buy a ripe fruit and veg. The other thing about buying um, 
vegetables that are, particularly when they've put them in the fridge, um, to chill them. Obviously the, the greengrocer or the veggie shop is trying to prolong the life of the fruit and vegetables, but what he's actually doing is not doing that at all. He should allow the fruit and vegetables to ripen before he puts it in the fridge. And um, Because, you know, this kind of thing happens and it makes me not want to go back to the place. So I have to go and educate my greengrocer and tell him not to put green tomatoes in the fridge. It's the same with things like um, any, any fruit and vegetable really. Um, uh, tomatoes obviously would be one, pineapples would be another one, putting them in the fridge when they're green. Um, and I'm adding quite a lot of extra tomato in here. Uh, the recipe doesn't call for quite as much tomato, but I'm adding extra because my family love a nice juicy tomato layer in this particular dish. And also, I had to cut so much of it away. Fries so that we don't heat oil when we're cooking. If you do feel you want to cook something with some fat or oil and you really would like that, that sort of slightly fried taste, then the safest oil to cook with would be your extra virgin coconut oil because it's the only fat that can handle the high temperature of actually frying without really being harmful to you because it's a saturated fat, it doesn't change in structure. And that's what happens with um, things like olive oil and grapeseed oil and cold, all these cold-pressed extra virgin oils. Once you heat them, they actually alter in structure. Your extra virgin um, coconut oil, why I like it more than butter, which is also a saturated fat, is that there's no cholesterol in your coconut. There is no cholesterol in coconut oil. Remember that because there's no liver in a coconut. Everything with a liver makes cholesterol. There's no cholesterol in any plant. All right, you can see this is brown very nicely. You can remove the skins if you want to, but I honestly find removing skins of tomatoes such an effort. And I just kind of think that life's too short to peel a tomato. But if you don't like the skins in the dish, then take, you know, Pop your put tomatoes into boiling water and then wait for the peels to sort of blister and then sit and peel them. And that's if you've got time and the inclination to do that. Some people swear. Some people swear that dishes taste so much nicer without tomato skins on, but I, I really haven't found that much difference. I really haven't. Maybe I'm just an absolute pleb. But I'm always looking for shortcuts when it comes to cooking. And I've, I've always been taught. I've always been taught as well that the most nutrition is just underneath the skin of the fruit and vegetables and it seems almost absurd to take that skin off because it's extra roughage and if there are extra nutrients in there, either way, take them off, leave them on, I've left them on, it's up to you. Oops, our broccoli is actually done and it's about to, oh look at that lovely bright green colour. I'm going to remove that. The butternut is simmering away gently there. Grab a fork, test it. Not quite done, so let's pop the lid on there and let that simmer gently. Okay. All right, what I'm doing here is actually just slicing the mushrooms for the salad. For two reasons, I put them on top of the broccoli. One, to sort of slightly warm the mushrooms and marginally steam them, and the other is to, it cools the broccoli down because it absorbs some of the heat. Um, I don't quite like um, warm broccoli in a salad with avo. Little mushrooms, you can just halve them or quarter them or even put, add them whole and gently steam them. But I'm, I'm trying to keep as much raw in the salad as possible because you've got quite a bit of broccoli that is steamed. And you need about two cups of mushrooms for this. And I'm just going to let that cool down. In fact, what I'll do is... Just pop that into the salad like that. 
And I, just before it finishes cook, cooking, I want to add some seasoning to it. <clears throat> I should have added it at the beginning, but I, um, I'm going to add it now. This is um, a new seasoning that hasn't been introduced yet. It's a chili and tomato. Um, but you can just use our herb salt or our garlic and herb salt. Um, this is what we call our kitchen range, so you'll be able to unscrew the tops. It also has a sprinkler to it. Um, and then you can add a little bit of coconut oil to this. We are going to be pouring cream over this, but to give the butternut a really nice creamy flavor, it's quite nice to add a lump of the coconut and then just mash it all up together with a little bit of the water. You can see a tiny bit of the water is left over, just so that it's not totally dry. You want it to be quite moist. And then you can taste it just before to check that it's seasoned enough. Um, tomato powder and chili and herbs and spices, very little salt, so it's not very salty as such. Um, right, the tomatoes look like they're cooked, and to that you can add some of our organic herb salt or our garlic and herb salt. Step number one is to put a layer of this at the bottom, your tomato and onion mixture. that on there. Now, cabbage, you know, you may say, why on earth are you even using it? Because, you know, if you really don't like cabbage, use lasagna sheets. Um, you know, you can use our gluten-free pasta. It doesn't have to be flat sheets. But what this does is it stops it sort of mixing while you're baking. And that's why I've put it into this glass dish so you can see the different layers. Cabbage has some wonderful properties. It has um, substances called indoles and isothiocyanates, and they're all known to be highly anti-carcinogenic or anti-cancer. In fact, there's some research indicating that people that eat a lot more cabbage have got are less likely to have breast cancer. So there is research indicating that cabbage may, you know, protect you against breast cancer. I, I don't mind eating it like this, and my, my favorite way to eat cabbage is that chickpea cabbage avocado salad that we did at a nurse's house on a previous DVD. If you don't know where that one is, then, um, okay, I'm going to add the spinach to this, and this is basically cooled down, so I'm just going to, you can chop this finely if you want to, you can, you don't have to have it in leaves like this, but as you can see, my spinach is just literally dissolved to very little, and I'm squeezing some of the water out because it does tend to get a quite a little bit watery um, in the dish. I should have cooked a lot more spinach, but it also depends. You know, if you've got a family that doesn't really like spinach, and you kind of you can chop it really finely so they don't notice it. Spinach is one of the dark green leafy vegetables that has a wonderful calcium to phosphorus ratio, which is the best way to get our calcium into our body is not in milk, it's in dark green leafy vegetables. It's the main reason why I take something like barley life on a daily basis, but spinach is also um, quite a good source of calcium to a certain extent. The oxalic acid tends to bind the calcium, but not all of it, you do get some of it. It's a high, um, good source of um, chlorophyll, of course we know that chlorophyll is a natural antiseptic. It's uh, known to be very close to hemoglobin in the blood. and um, so it's a very beneficial um, vegetable. Um, you don't have to be eating it every day, but at least um, once or twice a week is fine. Again, research shows that people that eat carrots or yellow vegetables and dark green leafy vegetables at least twice a week have a much lower incidence of cancer. So we're not eating carrots now, we're going to be putting the butternut on here. Now I could put another layer of, uh, of cabbage leaves, but at this point I'm not going to. Um, because we've got leaves and leaves, so I'm going to add the butternut at this point. Oops. And then, this is of course very nice and easy to... Oh, it smells delicious. And again, the quantities are really... I mean, it's entirely up to you. 
how much of each one you do, but you do need a decent. This was two butternut that I cut up, two sort of medium, smallish medium butternut. And here I'm going to use some of these cabbage leaves. So I'm going to top that with the tomato. And then you don't have to do the next step. You can just add a little bit more coconut oil. But especially for my husband Mark, who loves his cream, I'm going to actually top this with a bit of cream. And adding cream is also nice, sort of, for people that are used to eating meat and eating animal protein. Um, not that Mark eats it anymore, he's been vegetarian, but it's like his only sort of treat. And we, we probably have cream, or at least Mark has cream, at least once a week. He has it about once a week, and a dash of it in his malted carob, which is our hot drink. And I'm going to... You can see the dish is really nice and juicy. If it's not very juicy, you could add a dash of cream if you really wanted to. Um, I always find a dish like this kind of needs a bit of a topping. And if somebody's a vegan, of course you wouldn't do this. But um, if you can get hold of some organic cheese, it's great. It's ideal. Um, and top it just with a little bit of, this is basically uncolored cheddar cheese. As I say, organic is the best if you can get hold of it. Top it with a little bit just to kind of... Especially if you're having people over for dinner and they're kind of expecting really boring vegetarian food. Um, but as I said, this is a dish that you can serve with protein dishes without sort of feeling like you're missing out on traditional lasagna. Um, because, you know, you've got minced meat. In fact, even if you ate meat, you could use organic minced meat together in this dish and make a more traditional type of lasagna. Uh, as I said, a little bit of cream is fine. Topping it with a bit of cheese in the oven until it's just baked, probably half an hour to 40 minutes in a nice hot oven. Here we are with our broccoli and mushroom and red pepper salad. And uh, the reason I use red peppers and not green ones is number one, their color is beautiful. That's not the main reason. The main reason is that they're actually so incredibly nutritious. This beautiful red color shows that they're not only very high in beta carotene, but also in lycopene. Now, lycopene has been in the news for the last probably 10 years as this wonderful substance that is in tomato sauce. And you don't need to be eating tomato sauce, you just need to chew your raw food and you'll release the lycopene. Um, there's this theory that you have to actually cook things to rupture the cells. Well, when you chew food, you're actually rupturing the cells. So you don't have to cook it. And anyway, in this instance, I just love adding the, the, the raw red pepper like this. Um, the colors, I mean, it's just so exquisite. It's red and the green. It's almost like somebody's national flag, and to that, which is really going to make this, of course, we're going to add our avo. Now, remember that avocado is an incredible source of essential fatty acids, particularly your omega 3. It does contain some omega, sorry, not particularly, particularly your omega 6 essential fatty acids, and you can dice this. Um, be careful when you toss the salad to not mash the avo, try and keep it whole. You could add some black olives to this, which look great as well. Actually, um, I say you could actually um, add some black olives, and um, that would add to the essential fatty acids. The essential fatty acids are your omega-3s and your omega-9s. You have to actually get them from plants. What you get from animals is derivatives. You're not getting the actual original omega-3. What you're getting from animals like fish oil is you're getting derivatives of it, like um, omega-3 in your body makes five different derivatives. When you have fish oil, you're only getting two of those. And then you've got to have vitamin E to be able to use essential fatty acids. And wherever you find your omega-3s and omega-6s in um, you know, plants, avos, flax oil, olives, olive oil, you will always find vitamin E naturally in an unheated, unprocessed form. 
Um, the other thing is that fish oil, of course, contains cholesterol, and flax oil and avos don't. So your essential fatty acids are vital for your hormonal system. That's everything, your blood pressure, your blood sugar, of course, all the things to do with babies and making babies and um, premenstrual tension and... Um, oh, I love this stuff. Makes the most wonderful hand cream. And um, I put this on my face sometimes as well. It doesn't smell and it's not sticky. I mean, I've already bathed. I don't have to go back and bath because it's not remotely sticky. Okay, now to this we need to add the juice of probably half a lemon, depending on how big your lemons are, or how juicy they are. Now that I've got the avo on my hand, it's slipping all over the place. I just sometimes find you may just add too much tang to your salad. A little bit of olive oil as well, just to add the creaminess to it. And of course my secret ingredient, which in this instance is my the seasoning salt. Um, seasoning salt that we make has got ground black pepper, it has sea salt harvested from the west coast here in Cape Town, and it's got um, a couple of other spices like paprika, but one of the ingredients that really lifts the flavour of broccoli and mushrooms is the nutmeg and you've got to put in just enough otherwise it overpowers the dish. You don't actually want to taste, taste the nutmeg. You can add more avo if you prefer. I can, I can just see Mark looking at this thinking he wants more avo in here. Would you like more avo in your salad Mark? Or is it creamy enough for you? Okay. Now we're going to go and eat. Squeeze a little bit more of that water out of the spinach. I'm going to let that rest. 